Good morning and welcome to this morning segment of the Road to the a Road to Wisdom. I'm your host Danny Graham. So let's get ready to walk. Good morning, good morning. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning here in the city of South Carolina, and I'm your host, Andy Graham. Welcome to my show, The Road to Wisdom. In case you didn't catch yesterday's episode, I want to do a quick recap of yesterday's word, and that word was stay the course. Stay the course. And the definition of staying the course is keep going strongly to the end of a race or a contest. Now, today's word is going to be something um, similar, uh, or maybe the opposite of it, but today's word is missed opportunity. i say that again, missed opportunity. How many of us in life has, just want to knock ourselves upside the head and psh, why, did you, why didn't you take the opportunity? God, I, I hate that. I hate that. I wish I could do it again. Yep, we're going to talk about that, missed opportunities. And the definition for missed opportunity is to not use the opportunity to do something. That's a missed opportunity when you had a, it sitting right there, perfect for you to grab, take advantage of, and you choose not to do it, or either you don't see it in time, or it's too late, or whatever. You're like, man, I can't believe I did that. They told us right there, the, the newspaper said that it was going to be a sale, or that sign said it was going to be a yard sale, and I knew that was going to be there, and God, I didn't get up early enough, I didn't do it, or I, I thought about it too late. Those are missed opportunities. Also, the scripture for missed opportunity comes today from the book of John, the fourth chapter, the 35th verse, and it reads as follows. Behold, I have said to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Let me see that one more time. The scripture comes today from the book of John, the fourth chapter, the 35th verse, and it reads as follows. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Now, missed opportunities, like I said, we all have had them. Nobody is immune to feeling like, God, I can't believe I didn't take advantage of that. Or, man, I should have took advantage of that. Because we always say hindsight is twenty twenty. So when you have that missed opportunity, man, sometimes you know it. You feel like kidding yourself in the butt. You're like, God, I can't believe I didn't do that. Or, man, I wish I would have done that. Or, Lord, let that come back. Let me get another opportunity at doing that. A lot of times it's in romance. A lot of times it's in profession. A lot of times it's in just day-to-day activities where something that was good or something that was would have been beneficial or something that would been nice to have or something that was necessary sometimes, and we just missed out for whatever reason. Sometimes it's, we, we truly forgot about it or um, we went too late or they ran out of stuff or whatever the case may be. Or, or if it's romantically, maybe the, the person left, you, you saw them, had an opportunity to talk to them, and when they left, they went somewhere else or or then when you did finally work up, work up the nerve to talk to that individual, they've already married or they've gone somewhere else, they got another boyfriend, another girlfriend, whatever the case may be, and sometimes it's just a missed opportunity. So it happens. It's a part of life. But I'm going to discuss today on things that I think you can do about it and things that we see in, in today's world and today's that was in the biblical world. So let's go ahead and get into it. One example. I don't know if any of you know who Nolan Bushnell is. Nolan Bushnell. Nolan Bushnell, I think, was the president of Atari. Back during the time, during the Bill Gates era, when he was trying to get up off the ground, Bill Gates approached this individual, because I think he used to um, work for Bushnell. Um, and, uh, and guess what? That individual, Nolan Bushnell, could have been a owner, a one-third owner of Apple. For fifty thousand dollars, <laughs> let that sink in. The guy that owned Apple's now went to him and said, "Hey, look, bro, I need fifty thousand dollars seed money. I got this company and it's gonna be fantastic and it's gonna it's gonna change the face of the world. It's gonna do this, it's gonna do that." And I guess Mr. Bushnell was like, "I can't see the vision or whatever reason. I don't know what his reasons were, but for whatever reason, the seed money to start Apple would have been fifty thousand dollars. He'd have been one third part of that, and now." Apple is worth $480 billion. Let that sink in. He, he did $50,000 back then when Apple was being conceptualized and getting off the ground. He needed $50,000 seed money. And now today, it is worth $480 billion. That is a missed opportunity. 
second one that I read about. Magic Johnson, my favorite Laker, my favorite point guard. Back when Magic Johnson was trying to come into the NBA, he had three offers. One from Converse, he had one from Adidas, he had one from Nike. Well, he saw Dr. J who just threw out the Converses and, and Magic Johnson come from a very poor background in, in Lansing, Michigan. And he was like, man, I'm going to see all three of them. But which one's going to, which one I'm going to take? Well, he saw all three of them. And of course, as you know, Matt Johnson wore Converse. And I think the weapon was the name of it. He got him, one with him and Larry Bird. And uh, Converse offered him the more cash money. And he said, hey, I don't know what the cash dollar amount. I'm just going to say, hey, you sign with us, give you a million bucks today. So Matt was like, yeah, yeah. So he went to Adidas. Adidas didn't offer as much, didn't like it as much. He went to Nike. And Nike president said, hey, look, I know what Converse offered you, but I can't offer you that. Um, but I can offer you stock. Imagine like, hmm, stock. Well, I, I guess he wasn't educated enough. His family just didn't know about that. He said, nah, I'm going to go ahead and take this million bucks over here. Well, guess what? He didn't take the stock from Nike. And now Nike is worth whatever it's worth. But Magic Johnson single-handedly lost five billion dollars because he didn't take that stock and he talks about it on the show called all that smoke it's a podcast go to youtube punch in all that smoke it's hosted by uh ah, what are the two names i can't think of the names but one used to be a, they're former basketball players one plays for used to play for the lakers other one used to play for san antonio spurs two ex-basketball players and it's called all that smoke and just click on youtube and watch um that podcast they had Matt Johnson on there, and he said he lost about $5 billion because he didn't take the stock option. Let me tell you another quick one, too. Uh, there, uh, Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley used to be good friends, and Charles Barkley had a similar shoe deal uh, with Nike. I can't think what the Barclays were called. They had a particular name. Air, um, what, what Air Force? It was something. But anyway, um, while Charles was making this deal, he and Michael was talking. Michael said, look, you don't need all that money. How much money do you need? Take half the money. I think let's just say they offer him two million dollars. Michael said, Look, you take half that money, Charles. You take the other one in in stock, stock options. And Charles did that and it made him a lot of money. So if you have anybody that in that kind of world, a basketball world, the NFL world, the NBA world, tell them money's good. Money is king, but some of these big companies, you take their stock options because when that thing Starts doubling and redoubling and tripling and quadrupling and all that kind of stuff. Your money is going to expand and grow exponentially. So just make sure. Missed opportunities. That's what I tell you, boy. Matt Johnson was sick. Matt Johnson is almost nearly a billionaire now, but he would have been a billionaire several times over had he taken the time to uh, research those stock options. And the last one I'm going to talk about in today's world is Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders was turned down 1,009 times. Let that sink in. You go door-to-door. To door. I'm just going to use that example. You go in the door-to-door. Hey, my name is Colonel Sanders, and I'm going, Ksh, no. My name is Colonel Sanders, I'm going, Ksh, no. Hey, my name is Colonel Sanders, I got this chicken, no. Ksh. My name is Colonel Sanders, I got this chicken, it's fantastic. I'm sorry, sir, we're not looking for that. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, I got this chicken, it's fantastic. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an old recipe from the family, and da-da-da. No. 1,009 times. You get no. That would make anybody disheartened, I think. I'm like, oh, my Lord. Maybe this ain't for me. Maybe I meant to do this. But he kept on, and he went to that 1,010th door or person, and the individual said yes. And guess what happened? Colonel Sanders sold this company for $2 million, the rights, $2 million. And now today, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, is worth $28 billion. <laughs> Those other 1,009 people are kicking themselves in the butt because they could have been multi-billionaires, not millionaires, B with a, billionaire with a B. Billionaires. So, missed opportunities, boy. I tell you, right now, I, get, I guarantee they, they're kicking themselves in the butt. Like, why did we sign that old man get that chicken recipe because man we could have been chilling 
to lax him. But there goes the missed opportunities. Now I want to talk about two, well, three particular missed opportunities in the biblical times. First one I want to talk about is Noah. Now, as we know, Noah built the ark. According to my study and research, it took about 100 years for Noah to build the ark. Noah was a righteous man. He taught about righteous, talked about righteous things, lived a righteous life. I'm going to make the assumption, to me, the logical assumption that during that time, when Noah was building the ark, he was laughed at and ridiculed, and people was like, man, what are you talking about? It don't rain like that. It ain't rain like that in years. Rain was very scarce back then, according to my studies and stuff, in that part of the region, maybe even on the planet, but in the region where Noah was at, it didn't rain that much. It was very sporadic. And when Noah said that, man, it's going to be a great flood, it's going to do this and that, people laughed at him, thought he was crazy, and it's like, man, what are you talking about? So Noah, I'm pretty sure he was trying to teach people and say, hey, look, come on. I'm telling you, you know how I live. God is t God has spoken to me. He's told me, man, that it's going to be a great flood. If y'all don't change your ways, the world's going to be destroyed. Ah, oh, man, you go ahead and build your thing. Well, I'm going. On, I'm going over here. Uh, I'm going to the Lila's house. I'm going to do whatever I want to. I'm going to fornicate. I'm going to eat stuff I shouldn't eat. I'm going to live the way I want to live. You talking a bunch of nonsense, old man. Go ahead and build your art. Whatever you're going to do, I don't care. So for a hundred years, I'm pretty sure Noah was telling people, man, yelling from the rooftops, hey, it's going to rain. You better live a righteous life. God is going to do this. God is going to do this. Man, Noah, you crazy. Go ahead. And then after so long, they just became numb to it. They would see the art. Yeah, that's Noah. He's crazy, old man. He, he's doing this and that, man. Let's go. Blah, blah, blah. We do it here now. Today, we see something and we, that, that appears crazy to us, and we just tune it out, just get used to it, become oblivious to it. I feel that same thing happened. Those people back in that time, when Noah was building the ark, became oblivious to it because they thought he was crazy. What he was talking about didn't make any sense to him. But guess what? No one knew what he was talking about. And when that rain started, I guarantee you, they were like, oh boy, we in trouble. Missed opportunity. A hundred years, Noah would probably proclaim and say, look, y'all need to get your lives right. You need to do what you're supposed to do because God's going to have his flood. When it start raining, that was missed opportunities. All those all those hundred years that it took, and they start seeing them animals come two by two. I guarantee you, things start to get tight. But again, missed opportunity. Didn't take the time. And what did that missed opportunity cause them? It caused them their lives. Let that sink in. Caused them their lives. Second biblical example I want to talk about: Solomon and Gomorrah. We all know how bad and how evil Solomon and Gomorrah was and that Lot was the only one, Lot and his family were the only one that God spared out that city. It is logical for me to think that God gave Solomon and Gomorrah more time to repent, people had to repent, but they were so sinful, they were so unrighteous, just so evil, they wouldn't do their own things, didn't listen to God, there is no God. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to drink. I'm going to fornicate. I'm going to do this. I'm going to sleep with the same sex. I'm going to do this. I'm going to bestiality, idolatry, whatever you can name. They were doing in Solomon Gomorrah, having a good old time, didn't care, just doing all kind of stuff that was listed as abomination. Not, not my word. It's in the, in the Bible, biblical word, abomination, things they were doing. God sent his angels to Lot said, look, we're about to destroy this place. God is about to destroy it. You need to get your family and get up out of here. They were so evil and crazy but then that they wanted to have sex with those angels, not knowing who they were. They were just that sex crazed, just that deranged, just that evil, just that unrighteous, just so, just full of sin. It was crazy. So, Lot and his family get out. But how long do you think Solomon and Gomorrah lived that way and God was trying to help them? How long do you think? I think it was a long time. I think God was constantly trying to send people there. There's nothing in the Bible to, to back that up. But if God is the God of who he is now and he sent his son to save us and he gives us chances, opportunity to, to pray. We see it all in the biblical times where God gives you opportunities to pray, opportunities to to um, repent. People choose not to do it. 
If you choose not to do it, there are severe consequences. If you choose to do it, then God gives you a reprieve. He forgives you and you keep it moving. But people didn't do it. They missed the opportunities. I guarantee they missed the opportunities that God gave them to try to repent in Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened? It caused a severe consequence. That missed opportunity of, of repenting caused them to lose their lives because God destroyed it. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, rained down fire and rock, and just destroyed it. He told them too, Lot's family, through his angels, don't look back. If you look back, then something's going to bad. Make sure you will perish. Wife looked back. Guess what? She died. Turned to a pillar of salt. Missed the opportunity. She didn't listen. If she had listened, she'd have been alive to go with her family. But she missed the opportunity. Her nosiness got the best of her. Didn't listen. You don't listen. She missed the opportunity to live. That was a missed opportunity. She missed her opportunity to live and thrive and be fruitful or whatever whatever God had in plan for her. She she chose not to listen to God's plan and God's word and God's warning. So, another one. Third biblical example of missed opportunity. When Jesus was dying, was crucified on the cross, there were two thieves. One to the right of him, one to the left of him. One name was Saint Dismas. I don't know, I'm probably mispronouncing it. That was the, called the good, uh, the good thief. The other one was Justice. It was called the unrepentant thief. As they were dying on the cross, the good thief, Saint Dismas, said, Lord, please forgive me. Um, have mercy on me. And God pretty much told him, you go to Luke 23rd chapter, 43rd verse, that you will see me in paradise. Now, based on other than that, I haven't seen any way that decisively says that that guy went to heaven. But if God said that, that makes me believe that God saved him. That's correct. Jesus saved his soul and he went to heaven. That's my belief. Like I said, I don't have actual doctrine in scripture to back that up, but that is my belief. Um, the other one, he was unrepentant. He was saying that Jesus pretty much, from my understanding and from my reading, that if you are the son of God, then you can make all this start happening. You can save us and take us down from this. Stop the, stop this pain and suffering. He didn't do it. Jesus and God had a plan, but he did not repent. He did not ask God for forgiveness. And I think, and based on what the doctrine and everything else I read in the Bible, that if you don't repent and you die and you're not, your soul is not saved, then your eternal place is hell. I mean, I just going by what I've read, what I've learned, but, um, the, un, the unrepentant thief, Justice, he had a missed opportunity. He had an opportunity to repent his sins, ask God for forgiveness. He chose not to. So I think that it's gonna, it cost him his eternal soul. I think that, uh, he probably went to hell. I mean, I just, I don't, be, I don't mean to be blunt about it, but based on what I read, based on my beliefs, based on what the Bible is saying, that is what I believe. He had, that to me, it was a, definitely a missed opportunity. The other guy took advantage of the opportunity, St. Dismas. He took advantage of the opportunity and repented his soul. And repented, asked God forgiveness. God granted him. God said, like I said, go to the book of Luke, the 23rd chapter, 43rd verse, and it tells you what God says. That pretty much, that I, we will, I will see you in paradise. I'm paraphrasing. So, three examples of missed opportunities in the Bible. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you... Um, Four tips to overcome regret over missed opportunities. Four tips to overcome regret over a missed opportunity. First one is own it and learn from it. If you miss an opportunity, there's no need to sit there and sulk and complain about it, be mad about it. Just say, own it. God, Danny, I, I messed up. I missed that opportunity. I had an opportunity to go there and get that car or go there and and get this um, promotion. I had an opportunity to put in for it. I could have possibly get that job, that promotion. I had an opportunity to go to college. I could have get that degree, which could in turn get me a better paying job. I missed that opportunity. I could have did this. I could have done that. You just got to own it and learn from it. And then they say, look, if that set of circumstances presents itself to me again, I'm going to make sure I take advantage of it. You have to do that. You can't sit there and worry about it and sulk about it and, be complaining about it and woe is me no own it look i messed up 
But I guarantee if that comes back around again, I'm going to take advantage of it. That's what you got to do. Second thing you got to do, look for the next opportunity. Hey, if this one passes you by, look for something better. Go online. If this, this job passes you by, go online and look for another job. Go online and look for this. Or go online and look for that. Or, or if you see another time somebody you want to meet, like for instance, me and my wife went to go see uh, Prince when he was alive. And uh, there was a missed opportunity we had. I had the money. Had, he was going to come into the local town we were at. But he died before we could see him again. I missed opportunity. So and I'm just using that as an example. But guess what? If you want to see somebody in, in concert or whatever or see a movie or whatever and you miss it, then guess what? Look for the next time. Like, prime example, I, I go and watch a lot of movies based on what I do on, on my other channel. And uh, I like to go open the nights if it's going to be a good movie. But sometimes if I go too late or if I don't order the tickets enough, I go there expecting and hoping, have fingers crossed that I get a seat. And then sometimes it'll be sold out. But guess what? I look for the next show. I look for the next opportunity to watch it again. So if I miss the first opportunity to watch it, it sometimes it can hurt how fast I can put out a review or a response to the movie I saw. Then I make sure I try to get the next show, the next available show. I look for the next opportunity to watch that so I still can watch that movie and give a a um, informed, intelligent review of that particular movie. Same thing in life. If you miss out on an opportunity, just look for the next one. Next thing you can do, next tip to overcome regret over missed opportunities is prepare questions for the future. Write you down a list and prepare questions. Why didn't I do this? What can I do better? What I need to go to do this? Why didn't I do this? How can I improve such and such and such? Write down a list. Write down notes. Write down stuff and, and help visualizing things is a way that you can make those, those dreams, those questions a reality. Sometimes it's thinking and just like, oh, well, I'll, I'll worry about it later. But everybody that's successful that I read, Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, a lot of those people, if you listen to them on YouTube, they talk about, they write down this list, list of their accomplishments. And as each one they go, at, and, at, and as they accomplish each one, they strike, strike it off. You got to visualize. You got to write stuff down. When you put stuff in words, that makes it, that makes a part of the universe. And you're kind of declaring it. Look, I'm going to speak this into existence. Once you speak it into existence, then it's up to you to do the work to get to that point A. But you got to keep reminding yourself. The, the mind is very funny at times. you got to keep reminding yourself. you got to repeat stuff over and over and over. And I listened to a uh, a, uh, a video yesterday. I'm trying to figure out who, talk, who was talking. I can't think of who was talking. But basically, the individual was saying that you got to be careful how you talk to yourself. If you do something crazy... Yeah, I know it was. It was two rappers on Close Contra. I can't think of their names. Eric Jamal was one, and I think Taj Austin was the other one. And they were talking and um, on a podcast. And Close Contra, in case you don't know, it's a rap group. These four cats, they are awesome. Um, like I listen to all genres of music, but they are, it's not this crazy rap. It's like rap from back in the day. They have a message, and they are very spiritual individuals. And they were talking about positivity and how you, you talk to yourself. When you talk to yourself, encourage yourself. Don't encourage yourself in a negative way. You gotta be careful how you talk to yourself. And uh, talk to yourself to improve your, your your particular situation, to improve your attitude, to motivate yourself. You gotta be sure how you talk to yourself. Don't down yourself in a negative way because then once you start down yourself, it's gonna be second nature for people to down you and you to gravitate toward negative people. Um, but no, if you want to uh, try to get over the regret of a missed opportunity, you got to own it first and learn from it. Look for the next opportunity. Prepare questions of why you didn't take advantage of this opportunity and what you can do better to take care, to take advantage of the next opportunity. And last but not least, you have to identify the positives of that missed opportunity. In everything, there should be a silver lining. It's up to you to find that silver lining. So you got to identify the positives or, or why you didn't do it or what you can do. Make sure you don't miss the next one. Sit down and identify the positives. Look, I didn't do this, but maybe it's not time yet. Maybe I need to go back and study some more. Maybe I need to go back and do this. I need to go back and do that. Or I need to polish up this and polish up that. Find that silver lining and then look for the opportunity, the next opportunity, and apply all the things that you learned. 
Last thing I want to talk about and make the statement of, and I, somebody made it, I can't remember who did it, but I, I thought it was a very good one. I thought it was a very good analogy. It was a, God is like a GPS, a spiritual GPS. As you're traveling down life, down the road, and you don't know where to go, you punch in the GPS. I'm going to do today's and tie the analogy together. If you, today, if you don't know where you're going to, they got these things called GPS. They got them on your phone. They got the actual ones you can put on your car and your windshield. You just punch in an address. You punch in a location. You punch in this. You punch in that. And they'll give you directions. Sometimes they give you three different ways to get there. But it's going to get you to that destination. And then in life sometimes, when we get sidetracked and stuff following that, and we miss our turn, we miss the right turn, whatever, that GPS recalculates and gets you another way. It'll say rerouting. It'll buffer a little bit, then it'll send you, it'll give you another way. God works that same way. You in life, He sends us opportunity, and we miss it. You think He's going to stop? Nope. He's going to re, He's going to start buffering, rewiring, and give and lead you a direction right back to that blessing or a blessing that's even better. God is a spiritual GPS. That is how He works. Just because you miss a turn. Just because there's an accident, just because there's whatever the case may be in the real world, that GPS will find you a way. It'll warn you. Sometime it'll warn you um, there's a wreck ahead, 2,000, uh, 2000 feet, whatever, or there's a faster route, or there's a this, or there's a that. It tells you. My GPS will tell you there's a faster route. It'll cut you off two or three minutes, or there's a wreck this way, or there's police running the radar this way, or, or the exit is about to come to the right, or the exit is going to the left, or you turn 3,000 feet or 200 feet turn left. 300 feet turn right. God does the same thing. He does the same thing. We just have to listen. You pray to God. That's how we activate the GPS, the spiritual GPS, which is God. And if we miss something, God will reroute us. He will be another route, get us back to that destination that he wants us to get to. You just have to listen. He'll tell you when to turn. He'll tell you when that, that this is, you need to do this, you need to do that. You have to listen. Prayer and is the way to activate the GPS. But God is like a spiritual GPS. That was a very cool analogy. Well, that is my two cents on this particular word. I hope that it definitely um, touched you. I hope it resonated with you. And I hope that you would definitely come back and join me tomorrow. <clears throat> if you have not ever seen me before on this platform, I'm going to ask you to do a few things for me. First thing I'm going to ask you to do is please subscribe to my channel. Second thing I'm going to ask you to do is please hit that notification bell because I don't want you to miss any material that I upload in the future. Three, I'm going to ask you to hit that thumbs up, that like button. Four, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. If you leave a comment, I will definitely read it and get back to you. Fifth thing I'm going to ask you to do is watch my videos in its entirety from the start to the finish. And I'm going to leave you with this quote about missed opportunities. Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. <laughs> I definitely going to put that on a t-shirt. That is awesome. Opportunity or missed opportunity by most people. Correction. Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. Don't miss opportunity because you think it's going to be hard work. That's crazy. That's laziness. And that's a word for another day. But I am your host, Andy Graham. This is my short road to wisdom. I thank you all for coming. Y'all have a fantastic day. Be blessed. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day.